ETAP is different because what was achieved had never been done before. Having that collaboration between multiple entities to put forth a project that is still on production is an indicator of the opportunities that come as a consequence of collaboration and doing something unique relative to alliances. So it's, it's really great to talk about ETAP. In my mind, ETAP has, it was ahead of its time as a, a poster child for Mer UK, even before the concept of Mer UK existed. Five years ago, I was uh, managing BG Group's uh, European assets, and I was looking at different ways of developing a, a number of fields. And I'd heard about ETAP, and I actually went and uh, had a meeting with Dave Blackwood, who was BP's manager at the time. And he shared with me what was done differently all those years ago, the different commercial agreements between BP, Shell and Esso, and also how they worked themselves very differently through the supply chain, partnering with service companies in a very different way. And I think that great work has continued right up to the present. It was really welcome back in 2015, right in the, the midst of the, uh, the downturn through the low oil price, to welcome in this new investment of a billion dollars as the life extension investment on ETAP. And I was very pleased to have the chance to, to go offshore and see for myself firsthand the, the really great work that was ongoing. And I would say whilst it was very impressive, the technical work, what really jumped out to me was how that original spirit of collaboration continues very much to the present day. And uh, it was on the back of that that I was very pleased that the, the ETAP project, uh, Life Extension, won our first ever Mo UK award. And that was on the back of the work of BP, Shell, Esso, JX, Nippon and Zenor. Between them, they completely rewrote a number of commercial agreements. This put everyone on the same page and allowed the investment to proceed both on the central facility and on a number of associated fields. They cleverly realigned ownership interests. They, they rewrote the decision-making protocols and they looked at cost sharing in a different way to reflect the remaining value of the fields. And I don't think the story is over. I think there's still a lot of value to be created from the area. It's highly prospective and I very much look forward to future discoveries being tied back through the, uh, the ETAP facility. ETAP's future is very positive. We believe that through the investment that we had made around rehabilitation, it has underpinned and laid a foundation where fields adjacent and now a bit further away from the hub become real opportunities for production and progression of resources going forward. We really like the, the Central North Sea. It's a very prolific basin. It's obviously got a fantastic source rock, reservoirs at a whole bunch of levels, um, and there's still a lot to play for. So we're, we're encouraged by the, uh, particularly for example, what we saw in the recent licensing round. And we think people have got a glint in their eye. There are still good ideas. I think fields, like I say, are, are still producing well, but I think there will be more discoveries and I think the existing fields, new technologies will continue to unlock more and more reserves. BP's commitment to the North Sea is very strong. We believe we now have a portfolio. We have hubs in certain areas that we will grow going forward. And in this space, the foundation that we've created over the past is strong and will promote this future growth through what we believe will be very competitive results around efficiency, costs, and the development of resources going forward. Mm -hmm.